Well, you want to know what God's saying for 2024? You really want to know? <laughs> well, let me back up a little bit. I have brought up two words, and I never use my computer, but I lost my iPad. You got to pray for my husband. He's always looking for my iPad, my Bible, you know. I mean, it takes a lot of patience to be married to me for 50 years. You know, you, you just got to, he's got to love me a lot, you know. He does roll his eyes sometimes. Oh, Cindy, you know, what'd you do now, you know? But he rescues me, and he's very good at it. You know, but if you have an, a computer, you have to, like, put in your password. It's very irritating. <laughs> and then it doesn't work. Oh, who cares? Okay. <laughs> I was looking at my Bible before I came up, so it's good to look at your Bible. And I was looking at my Bible, and, and Psalm 2, I wrote from Jerusalem, 918-23. I was preaching in Jerusalem about 10 days before the attack, and um, I was preaching. We have a conference there that I, we don't put on, but I participated for like maybe 20 years. And we have 150 nations that come together to pray. Maybe some of you have gone for that. And there's a lot of intercession. And um, Psalm 2 says, Why do the nations rage? And this is what I underline. And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. So as I'm flying to Jerusalem, I'm asking the Lord for a word. And you know, the Hebrew, if you don't understand, there's a Hebrew calendar. Uh, if you're a new initiate in this prophetic thing, we can seem a little weird sometimes. But it all will make sense one day. And so the Hebrew year is 5784. And we know that, that the number four actually means something it means like a door so i was going into jerusalem and i was so agitated i told my husband i can hardly stand to be here that i have i have been i we've been going since 87 so many times many times sometimes a year so i i can't you know i've been there i know what the what the heavens feel like and the heavens were violent to me any other weird people like me that can't sleep sometimes because things are kind of going like this? You're supposed to say yes. Okay, like, okay, all right. I have to know you're my crowd, okay? And so I told Mike, the heavens are just violent. And so I went up to preach, and I'm taking the text, Isaiah 22, 22, so you know I use the Bible. The key of the house of David I will lay in his shoulder so he shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. And so the Lord began to speak to me as I'm preaching. It's very interesting because very relevant concerning what Chris Reed had gotten from the Lord through dreams, Jeremiah Johnson and others, other prophets that were very, very agitated on October 6th before the attack. Anybody else felt the, can I see your hands, felt a real agitation? Like, you know, sometimes you can't identify it. Sometimes you don't know what it is. But you know there's something going on. Well, I started preaching, and I started preaching, call 911. I am sounding the alarm. I'm sounding the alarm. We have got to pray for Israel. And I started prophesying that a terrorist attack was coming. And dark days would come to Israel, but afterwards a great spiritual revival would happen. And it is happening. It is happening. And so that I was very agitated, and, and I knew, I knew that God was trying to warn. Now, we could go back and say a lot of things about that because one thing I want, that I wrote on the way to Jerusalem 
was we needed wartime intercessors. You see, there, the bridegroom has to come out of the bridal chamber. We have to understand that we cannot be passive. In this season, with the accuser of the brethren and everything that's happening, the devil's going to run over you like a smooth road. You're going to be a grease spot if you don't learn to stand and take your authority. We have got to stand up. We have got to be a voice in the Hebrew you know, calendar. This, this, we are in the decade of the pay or whatever it means, the voice. We have such authority in our voice and we have it in the spiritual realm and we have it in the natural realm backed up by the spiritual realm. And so God began to speak to me that we are in a season of war. Now you have to understand this was on my way to Jerusalem. And, this, and I wrote for the United States in September, a war president must be elected. Depending on who the president is will de determine how the nation fares. It will survive either way, but it will be greatly diminished if a wartime president is not elected. If we have a weak president, well, we just can't. Because America we will lose our greatness. And the Lord said to me, and I wrote this down, that God was going to shake the Republican Party. And it was going to be a huge shaking. And it's still shaking. And we have been in major... Now, God is not an elephant or a donkey. We know that. He's the lamb. But we have to understand that there are times that God has to choose different people. And the Lord spoke to me that we have got to learn to be spiritual activists. That we have got to learn how to stand in a place and spiritual lobbyists. In other words, we have to be intelligent. We have to pray with the information. We have to be informed reformers and informed intercessors. We need to know what is going on. And, and I want to tell you what I feel here tonight. I see an army. I see a wartime army. Now, I don't know what General Boykin spoke about, but I am telling you, there is something being infused. There's something happening. Because the Lord said to me, if there is not a wartime president elected, their enemies will see that we are weak. In 2025, the, and I, you know, you may know, let me back up. Uh, I chair a council of prophets. We just met with 200 prophets from 32 nations in Dallas. And uh, Bobby Connor is part of us, and Jason and others here. And, you know, we talk, we, 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 we really talk, and I ask them, how many of you, I asked them a year ago, how many of you know the date for World War III? Five of them said 2025. We have 50 for one of the councils. And so the, what I'm trying to navigate this is the Lord said to me, that if we don't pray, our enemies are just waiting. Are you listening? But the point is, we do know how to pray. Are you understanding this? We are not weak. We are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And let me tell you that... Last May, I was in Argentina. Now, I was part of the Argentine revival. I preached in stadiums. I mean, I was like 39, 
40, you know, and I was preaching to large stadiums in Argentina with Carlos Anacondia and Claudia Freisen and, you know, all these different leaders and, and the Cabreras and Ed Silvoso. And so at that time, when I first went in 1999, Ooh. I, I'm sorry. No, no. It was 1990. The inflation rate was like 3,000% per year. And we developed a plan and a model of intercession to heal the economy. Because the Bible says we can heal nations. Do you know there's a reason Revelation 22, the last chapter in the Bible, talks about healing of nations. Why would God talk about it if we can't do it? So I want to I wanna mentor you a little bit, and I want to watch my time because, you know, I could teach eight hours on this. But many times in the church, we report what's happening in the second heavens. We report what the demons are doing what the principalities are doing. And we need to recognize our enemy. But when we get in the third heaven, when we get in the throne room, in other words, we, we get divine intelligence when we come up higher. And the Lord said to us prophetically over and over this year, come up higher. I want to show you something. Come up higher. And when we get up there, we get the strategy on how to pray to stop the mess that Satan is making. So anyway, I won't go into all of it, but at that time we developed this strategy, and then I prophesied that the Wall Street Journal was going to have as a headline that there is a revival in the economy of Argentina, and nobody knows why. I know why. They filled that nation with prayer. And in uh, just a couple of years, the inflation rate didn't, went down to one and a half percent. Now, we have a prayer network, 50 states in America, and we've also built prayer networks all across the Silk Road, many, many nations. We worked in many nations. And after the Silicon Valley Bank collapsed, I was flying in from some nation and it's like sometimes, listen, this is shocking and humbling to say, but the Lord said to me, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> what am I going to do about that, you know? But you see, I know how to come up higher. Are you understanding this? There are situations in your life that you don't know what to do and you can't see what to do, but if you will come up higher, God will give you a word of wisdom. God will show you what to do. You will get divine strategy. And the prophetic word is like a strategic roadmap for your future. Many people don't understand what to do with a prophecy. They don't understand how to activate it in their life. They don't understand the prayers they have to pray. You know, and that's another whole teaching. But I want to say to you, I said, okay, we have, a, we have 50 state generals. So the Lord, I said to the Lord, what's the strong man? He said, mammon. Now, isn't that kind of a duh thing? You know, it's like, oh, yeah, of course I knew that till you knew it. You know, revelation so simple once you get it. And so we prayed at all the Federal Reserve banks, all the Treasury Department. We prayed through the banking systems. And I want to tell you, God bless them. They stabilized the economy. They did it. When we, we're still at it. But I want to say to you, listen to me. We're in a tumultuous times, and the nations are raging. So, you know... As a mama in the Lord, I have spiritual ambition for you. I'm trying to pull you up higher. Because whatever mess you're in, whatever situation you're in, God wants to give you the faith to get out of that. 
And God wants to show you how to get out of that. Because the same Holy Spirit that lives in you, the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is inside of you. He wants you to activate it. He wants to give you the battle strategy, whatever you need to defeat the enemy and be successful. And what if we do it together? Come on. We need wartime intercessors. So last May, I said I was in Argentina. It had been a few years since Mike and I had been back. And I gave a word, not publicly. You see, you have to learn how to be skillful as a prophet to nations. You have to know who to talk to. And you have to know when to talk to them. And you have to know how, how, what diplomacy you need to use to talk to, to who's who. And so I met with a group of some of the largest church pastors. And I said, Argentina's going to become like Venezuela. And you're going to collapse. Now, they knew a prophecy that I gave many years ago. After the great revival, I called together pastors. I mean, they had 100,000 member churches. They're large. And I sat down with them. And I said to them, the economy of Argentina is going to collapse because everything we tied up in 1990 for the economy now is untied. And so, um, and I said, in communism, far left socialism is going to come and take over the nation. And they went away saying, well, communism is nothing in Argentina. But it happened. But I said as a sign that what I'm telling you is real, one year from now the economy will collapse and there's going to be rioting in Buenos Aires. It all happened. One year from that date the economy collapsed. So I, I was sharing with these leaders last May and they said, we know that happened. I said, well, let's get a plan that it doesn't happen again. They said, let's do it. So they, we, we began to develop strategy and they did it. They prayed in every province. They filled every single province with intercessory prayer. They began to decree the government was going to change, that far-left socialism government was coming down. And the first time in 50 years, they now have a president that is literally shaking up the strong man of socialism in Argentina. And they prayed that in. They prayed the price. And they believed the word. The Bible says, believe the prophets and you will prosper. Now, you might say, oh, and the first thing he's, he's saying is, I'm moving the embassy to Jerusalem. Wow. Wow. Have any of you seen the news out of Argentina? I was just reading what he's doing today, and I just thought, oh, wow. I mean, in I don't know how many days, he's massively changed the country. The same spirit. The same anointing. And we're going to pray. And we're going to pray. And the Lord says, I need a wartime president. And I need wartime intercessors. And I need war colleges. We've got to have war colleges to strategize. And the Lord says over Morningstar, I am going to raise up my spiritual warriors out of this house, says the Lord. I am going to raise up an army, says the Lord. And the Lord says there will be days and days of travail and, and, and crying out to God. And the Lord says, as you release this, I will bring the revival as you release this I will bring the souls because you will be a revival center and the Lord says this place is way too small this space I'm giving you a new skin says the Lord I'm getting ready to, to expand your I'm going to double I'm going to double and I'll double again and so the Lord says get ready because there's some of you I am assigning and you're going to know you have this assignment because the anointing is coming upon you right now. And so just clap your hands. Come on. Come on. Now, 
Let me tell you something else. I want to read another thing. And I, oh, and I, oh, I didn't finish with World War III. Ten years ago, God spoke to our prophetic council that Satan was going to try to take a regional war and make it a world war. So we have been praying for years over the Arab Spring, you name it, whatever it is, to tamp down. And some of our our prophets have been in Taiwan praying, speaking with their intelligence people, and Jason knows this. You know, he's had a lot of influence there and spent hours and days and months and months fasting and praying to hold back China. Intercessors have also gone to Wales, to Reese Howes, if you haven't read Reese Howes' Intercessor, to the Blue Room there, and have been on their faces to delay this war. Now, at any moment, it could spark, but intercession, intercession shapes history. Prayer, Derek Prince wrote a book, Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting. So I want to say to you, there is not one believer that should say, this is not mine to be involved in. Because the enemy is at the door. The snake is at the door and wants to take this nation. And so the Lord says, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. And you must determine, listen to me, if you are the only one praying, you're going to do it. If you're the only, you won't be. God always has a people. And God always has intercessors. I remember we were in Beijing praying through uh, Revelation 12. It was a road map. We, had, we found out that Marco Polo had gone in, in the exact years, you know, talking about a Revelation 12, bringing the gospel. And, and you know, I, I can't go into all of it, but we knew we had to pray some things into China. And the Lord spoke to us about some things that would come if we didn't stabilize China. And so, you know, when we were there in Beijing and Jason was with us, um, remember, Jason, we found intercessors from Korea that had been there like seven years to prepare to pray for the Olympics that were in China, in Beijing. And one of their assignments was that they would not take the dragon as their emblem, but they would they would change something else. And you know, that's exactly what happened. They, the Han people has the dragon symbol. They didn't take it. And they, they adopt a little kind of like animated figure. Somebody is praying the price somewhere. But now we can't be hidden anymore. The bridegroom, amen, Bob? The bridegroom has to come out of the bridal chamber. And we have got to get serious. We have got to wake up. We've got to come up higher. And the Lord is saying, this is a mobilization of every believer. Now, God showed me, and I sent a word into the White House in 2017 that that a day would come, and it happened even during the pandemic, that the Lord showed me China would militarize during the pandemic. And then when North Korea went recently went to meet, uh, Kim Jong-un went to meet with um, uh, Putin, the Lord showed me that they began to promise territory, that South Korea was promised to North Korea, and that they would use Korea as a staging ground for their, and that they were going to take over Vietnam, Korea, Japan, the Philippines, and, the, and, and, and on. So I want to say to you, we've got to say thank God to these inter- for these intercessors that have been raising their money and praying and prayer driving. I mean, in America, I know a lot of our leaders, you know, we've got some states, you know, I don't know if Mary Medford's here. 
But anyway, she's our general for here. But, but I mean, they sleep in their cars. They had prayed at every abortion clinic before abortion was overthrown. They prayed at all these religious centers. I, I want to say to you, but we need more. Now, you might say, what does this have to do with me? Well, I tell you what, if we didn't send our sons and daughters into World War III, you would have wished it had been something to do with you and your grandchildren and your nieces and your nephews because we have a margin of time and we need a wartime president. And I believe God is preparing a wartime president. Now, on the other side of this, the Lord spoke to me on the plane going to Jerusalem. He said, we're in the greatest economic reset of modern history, and we're just at the beginning of it. And the Lord said to me, I am going to raise up economic solutionists, and that there is an anointing of solutionists. Now, if you can get in the heavens... God will tell you what to do. I was getting all frustrated reading all this stuff about the digital dollar, you know, we can't buy, we can't sell. You know what the Lord said to me? You won't, you won't believe what he said. He goes, I've got this. <laughs> like, oh, I mean, I was very embarrassed, you know. <laughs> You're reading all this stuff, but I've got this. I know what to do. I, can't, you do. I mean, what do you say to God? I'm so embarrassed. You know, of course you've got this. And I was talking to a friend of mine, Kevin Freeman, and he was, he was, we're texting back and forth. He said there are now 20 states that are working on going on the gold currency. Did you know that? 20 states going off the paper system or the digital system and looking to go on gold, the gold standard. Isn't God smart? I mean, he, he always is preparing a way. And so if you are reading all this stuff and you're getting real scared and you're getting real worried, understand this, the power of prayer is like a modern-day atomic bomb against the plans of the enemy. We need to pray atomic prayers. We need to get before God, and we need to pry out for those solutionists. I was talking to Lance Wall now, and, we, I was ta and prophesying to him, we were talking about solutionists. And the key is, find your tribe. Okay? The new wine is found in the cluster, Isaiah 65, 8. God is going to assign people to you and to you to them because you are going to be able to function on a higher level when you come together, just like the compadres here. There you go. Wake up. Okay. Just, just like the compadres. And so how do you know God is assigning you? Well, you just, you just really have a supernatural connection with them. I mean, when God brings the Esther and Mordecai's together or the Ruth and the Naomi's or whoever it is, when God brings you together, you think you've known them all your life and you knew them two, two minutes. You don't even know their middle name. You don't even know if they have kids or not, but you just start meeting with them and it's like a meld happens. It's something so supernatural. God brings your Wilberforce group. If you don't know about who Wilberforce was, he, he was the parliamentarian that, that God used in a great way to overthrow slavery in England. So... I want you to dream big tonight. I, I want to stretch you. And it's not about age. I mean, I'm 39 in Argentina. <laughs> what? <laughs> I say so. No, no, I mean, I was 39. <laughs> I could be 39. <laughs> Nah, okay, I'm 72. Anyway, but I, I was a 39-year-old kid in Argentina planning a strategy that would heal a nation, okay? And so 
And, and it worked. But when I'm flying there on that airplane, you think I had that strategy? You think I knew what to do? But the second I got my feet on the land, on the assignment, I knew exactly what to do. Many times we hesitate to move forward because we don't know what to do. It's like putting your feet in the Red Sea. That Red Sea didn't part before they put their foot in it. They had to be willing to get wet. And so God is saying to you that I am challenging you to go deeper and higher and, I, and it doesn't matter. You know, I'm in my 70s, and I'm planning, I'm planning some things for continents. I'll just tell you the truth. You know, so, but I didn't start with continents. I started with small things like cities. And maybe you're not called to a city. Maybe you're called to your neighborhood. Maybe you're called to your district. Maybe you're called to your congressional district, whatever. But I want to say to you, live a meaningful life. My spiritual ambition for you tonight is that when you stand before the throne of God and your name is called, he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I want you to accomplish the will of God for your life. And so, some of you maybe have gotten a little bit stuck. <laughs> well. <laughs> or you just don't know what to do. I am going to pray for you. That God will show you your door. A door that no man can shut. Some of you, I was telling somebody tonight, your door is being formed. And you're very frustrated. But the Lord says, trust me, I know where the door is. And if you don't know yet, some of you need to go back to prophecies that God gave you. If you haven't fulfilled those yet, why does he need to give you a second one? Oh, that's the prophet side of me. Okay. I mean, so go back and look at the road map and know what to do. And know what God is calling you. When, we, when God gave us a prophecy to move from Colorado Springs back to Dallas, Texas, almost 20 years ago, part of the prophecy was you will redig the wells of revival in Dallas. Well, Dallas has had a lot of revivals. We've had Mariah Woodward Edder and Amy Simple McPherson and Oral Roberts and Catherine Coleman. We've had a lot of major revivals in Dallas. But... Some of the wells got stopped up. So I said, well, how do you do it? You see, come up higher. Now, you might not do it on this scale, but I said, what do we do? And the Lord said, I want you to pray and fast for 40 days that the wells will be open. So I, we went to Christ for the Nations. They gave us the library chapel for 40 days. and Oh, and that many miracles would break it. For 40 days, we prayed and we fasted. For miracles, and we did 10 nights of miracles. And by the last night, if you've ever been to Christ the Nations, their big auditorium, there were so many miracles. They went out of the building, all the entrances, all into the streets. We turned away thousands of people that wanted to get a miracle. You see, strategy. Now, I'm going to pray for you that God will show you what to do. How many people have ever had a prophecy here? Raise your hand. Okay? You got to steward them. They don't just automatically happen. You have to know what to do with them. I'll give you one instance. Again, I'm sorry these are nations, but I'm a nation. I'm a prophet to nations. Um, I gave a prophecy over Guatemala and the prophecy was that the communists were in the mountains above Guatemala City. And that they were going to come down and they were stirring up the indigenous people and they were going to come down into Guatemala City and the communists would take it over. But if they would feed the poor and if they would go to them and take care of them, that when the communists came, they would say, we don't need you, we have Jesus Christ. 
So I came back a year later. They hadn't done anything. I said, what do you want the communists just to take over Guatemala City? Later it was found out this is exactly what was planned. And so they said, what do we do? So I, so I said, okay, let's go to the biggest churches here. You got a lot of muscle. And you go feed those people. So they did. All these women, the mama bears, watch out for those mama bears. Ooh, we got mama bears in America right now. Anyway, and so they, they, they took solar panels and they went on donkeys to people that had not been evangelized in the mountains. And they showed the Jesus film and whole villages got saved. And then they brought their agricultural specialists. They'd never seen a vegetable. They taught them how to grow, grow food. They developed solar houses for them. They prayed for them. They got healed, and they brought medical clinics. And when the communists came, you know what they said to them? Oh, we don't need your doctors. We have Jesus Christ. And there never was a communist invasion of Guatemala City. Now, the same spirit that lives in me lives in you. You name might not be a prophet to the nations, but God can use you to impact your neighbor. And God can use you to impact your school board. Listen, those mama bears are taking over those school boards. I'm telling you, the devil has got to be shaking in his boots right now. Sometimes people get discouraged because when they pray, the strongholds hatch. Then you know where they are. I, you know, they were there all the time. And so God is just going to use you. So I'm going to pray for you tonight. Stand to your feet. I'm going to pray. And I am fishing for every single one of you. Can we have some musicians come? I'm going to pray for every single one of you for the right door to be open. Keys of influence. Every one of you can touch someone no one else can touch. Maybe you're not a millionaire, but maybe you're one person away from a millionaire. Maybe you, you know, don't know what influence you have, but God will give it to you. You've got to have spiritual ambition for yourself. Spiritual ambition is not a negative thing. We're moving from the church age to the kingdom age. Okay, we are now in the kingdom age. And we have a big responsibility. And so God wants to use you in a great way. And some of you tonight, whether you're 16 or whether you're 80, you are going to receive a commissioning. God is going to mark you. I am here on the balconies to mark you. I am here, and I just feel anointings, just mantles falling. I want to say to you, we stand in a building. I used to preach here in the late 80s, okay, when it was PTL. I've seen a lot of things, but a man named Rick Joyner, my friend that I love so much, he walked into this hull where it, people were burning fires, and some people thought, just tear it down. But one man got on and had a vision. You stand on the shoulder of giants at Morningstar. One man. Do you think God loves you any less? So whatever the scope and whatever the scale of your assignment... God wants to fall on you tonight. And he wants to give you the knowledge to come up higher. There's great revivalists in this room. There's some of you that are going to win thousands and thousands of souls. There's economic solutionists in this room. The Issachar's. You're here. And all you have to do is grab it. I'll take it. I don't know if there are any children, but God called me to preach when I was nine years old. And when I started preaching, there was, I didn't know a single woman preacher because we were Baptists. 
Okay, say la. All right, and we didn't believe. I didn't know those Pentecostals. We thought they were heretics anyway. You know, so I didn't know. And I didn't know a single woman preacher when I started to preach, not one. And I was preached against, written against on television, radio, newsprint. And my generation is looking to some of you younger ones here saying, don't waste it. We paid a price for you. Listen to me, to you, the Esters, the Mama Bears. Lou Engel's taking us all to October 12th to the mall, a million women on the mall, a million Mama Bears. Don't mess with our kids. That's the thing. I love that thing. Don't mess with my kids. Don't mess with our school children. God isn't confused about what gender he made him, okay? And we shouldn't be confused either. That's a hallelujah! I could just weep looking in your faces. Now I want you to dream. I'm going to ask God, even as you go to your room or your home, wherever you're going to, for for something to be stirred inside of you. You see, we serve a great God, so there's greatness in every one of you without exception. Some of you don't believe that, but God does, and I do. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you. I thank you. For your children here. I thank you for the 12 year olds, the 14 year olds. I thank you for the 70 year olds, 60s, and the 50s. I thank you for the 20 and 30 year olds, 40, 50. Holy Spirit, fall on them now. Fall on them. Give them exceptional courage. Father, I pray their dreams will be big and not small. Father, I pray that they will want to advance the kingdom of God in this age. Father, I pray for thousands and thousands of souls. I pray for the miracle anointing to come upon your people in a special way. In Jesus' name. I wasn't going to do this, but the Lord just spoke something to me. He said, there's some here God is calling you to preach. And there's some that have been running from the call and you have been negotiating with God and you've been saying, well, I'll do this, but not this. No, you have to do anything he asked you to do. One time my husband gave me the best compliment. He said, God can trust you, Cindy, because you never tell him no. No matter what price you're going to have to pay, So, close your eyes just a moment. If you'd say, Miss Cindy, I feel God is calling me. Especially for those who are running from the call. Maybe you're a preacher's kid like I was. Preacher's kids rarely want to preach the gospel. But I want to pray for you. Even if it's one, maybe God's calling you to the nations. Or maybe God is calling you. You could have a call to be a Joseph or whatever. But I want you to come right here with me. Come on, quickly. Who's going to come first? Who's going to come first? Come on. Come on. Absolute surrender. I want to tell you something. It's going to be hard. I'm not going to make this easy on you. There's someone you're older in life, but you have been compromising with God and you've been telling God what you'll do and not do you didn't even know some of you that you were doing it but you were doing it there's an old song that says I have decided to follow Jesus though none go with me still I will follow 
I tell you, has it been hard to follow Jesus? Absolutely. Talk to Bob Weiner. I know the pioneering you've done, Bob. It was hard to open up all those universities. You've done, some, you've known some hard days of criticism, people speaking against you, but you decided to follow Jesus, and you never turned back, and you would not. And a whole generation was influenced that you're teaching on Reformation and all you did. I feel like the Lord wants to say thank you tonight, Bob. I feel like the Lord just wants to say thank you. You did it. And as your friend, I'm so proud of you. Bob Weiner, I'm so proud of you, all you've done. Raise your hands. Have you decided to follow Jesus? The song says, Though none go with me, still I will follow. Do you know that old song? We're going to sing in a minute then. So I want you to say, Dear God, I give you my life. I give you my life. A hundred percent. I accept the call. And I will not turn back. I give you everything, Jesus. Use me, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Let's go ahead and sing that, can we? I have decided to follow Jesus. verse the cross to the cross before me the crowd behind me the cross before me the cross me the world behind me Father, I thank you, Lord. Lord, in the annals of heaven, you are recording every decision. Lord, you're choosing. You're choosing. This young man with the beard, God has chosen you in such a special, unique way. And he's going to give you so many souls. He's going to give you so many souls. Now, Father, I pray for the courage tonight the courage to stand in the gap, to be wartime intercessors, wartime watchmen and women. Father, to be mobilized, to fast and pray for a nation in distress. And Lord, I thank you. And we do ask you for the nations. Give us the nations, Lord. 
for our inheritance. Amen. Why don't you turn and pray with someone? Just maybe whatever decision you've made or if you're out there in the balconies, just pray for someone in some way. Would you do that? Just take a moment. Turn to somebody. Introduce yourself.